Hey everyone, I'm Abby, and welcome back to One Code Camp channel. Today, we are going to talk about the last thing that we need from MongoDB Fundamentals, the MongoDB Atlas. MongoDB Atlas is a fully managed cloud database service provided by MongoDB. It offers several advantages for developers and organizations compared to traditional relational databases. Here are some of those advantages. First, scalability. MongoDB Atlas provides automatic scaling capabilities that allow you to handle growing data volumes and traffic. Unlike relational databases, which often require complex and manual scaling processes, MongoDB Atlas offers horizontal scalability through sharding. Here is where data is distributed across multiple servers. This enables seamless scaling without sacrificing performance. The next one is high availability. MongoDB Atlas ensures high availability of your database through replica sets. A replica set is a cluster of MongoDB instances where data is automatically replicated across multiple servers. If one server fails, another server will automatically take over, minimizing downtime. This built-in redundancy is not always available in traditional relational databases and typically requires additional setup and configuration. Lastly, global distribution. MongoDB Atlas allows you to distribute your data across multiple regions, enabling low latency access for users around the world. This global distribution capability is especially important for applications with a geographical dispersed user base. In contrast, relational databases often require complex setup and replication mechanisms to achieve similar global distribution. Now, we're going to move forward to the fundamentals of MongoDB Atlas, from setting up an account, connecting to MongoDB Shell, and just explore how to use MongoDB Atlas in general. First, let's go to mongodb.com slash atlas slash database. And here we can sign in if we already have an account, but for those of us who don't have an account yet, we can click on try free so that we can sign up to this one. Let's put on our first name, last name. Our company is optional. So for me, I will just say one code cap and you should also type in your email and your password. Then tick on the agree to the terms of service and privacy policy, then click join free. Once we have clicked that, it will redirect us to the page and it will tell us to verify our email. So here you can go to your personal email address that you've entered and verify your email there. After verifying your email, it will redirect us to this page, telling us that email successfully verified. Now we can click on the continue button. Now we have successfully created our account. Let's wait for this to load. And it will redirect us to this page, welcoming us to Atlas. And here we have to select a few things. First, in the getting to know you part, what is our primary goal? So for now, we can just select learn MongoDB. And then how long have you been developing software with MongoDB? So we can say that we are new to MongoDB. Okay. And this one is about our project, what programming language, so since we have been using or creating apps with JavaScript, we can use or select JavaScript node.js. And what kinds of data will your project use? And for now, we can just select other or not sure or none. It's really up to you. Okay. And then will your application include any of the following architectural models? Okay. And since we are still not sure, and we are still learning about MongoDB and MongoDB Atlas, we can just select not sure or none. And let's click on finish.
After that, we should configure our database deployment options. We can choose any of these three, M10, serverless, and M0. But again, since we are still exploring the functionalities of MongoDB Atlas, let's use the free one. AWS as the provider, then the region depending on your location. Usually, this automatically detects which region you are located, but just in case, you can choose it manually. And all of those that have stars are the ones recommended for you. Then you can also change the name. This one will be the name of your project. And just take note that this cannot be changed. So if you want to name it to something specific, you can do that. But since this is just a tutorial, we can leave it as is. Then tags are optional. There will be a little puzzle, so let's solve that very quickly. Then Let's choose how we want to authenticate our connection. And that will be with username and password. Take note of your credentials and keep it handy. Then we can now click create user. We would like to connect later to our local environment. And you can also choose a cloud environment, but that is more advanced. And we will not tackle that for now. Next. Add your current IP address. And once that's all done, this will pop up on our screen, meaning that we have successfully set things up. By the way, this keeps popping up. This is a newer feature where you can choose dark mode. And it really just depends on your preference. Let's close this for now. Now, these little models will appear to get us familiarized where things are located. We have the project overview, database deployment, database deployment module, and resources in Atlas updates. After that, we can now connect to our local environment using MongoDB Compass. We have tackled this in our previous videos, so if you're not yet familiar with this one, you can also check out our dedicated video for that. Okay, so here, what we will need is the connection string from Atlas. If you remember previously, we have only been using our local host. And since we are setting up our Atlas, we can now connect to that. To connect, we will need the connection string. So let's go back to Atlas and find and click the connect button. Then we will choose Compass. I have MongoDB Compass installed, but again, if you don't have it yet, make sure to install it first. Feel free to pause this video and go back to it later on. Then here is where we are going to get our connection string. Just copy this using this copy button. Then we'll just have to replace the password with the previous password that we have noted earlier. But in case we have forgotten it, we can navigate to database access, choose that user that you have created with that connection string, then edit your password. You can auto-generate that as well. Copy that and update user. We can now replace the password in our connection string. Okay, oops, we should also omit the angle brackets. All right, and let's try connecting again. Go! We have successfully connected to our MongoDB Atlas using the cluster that we have created there. Here are the default databases, admin and local. Then just to familiarize, again, we have the My Queries tab and then databases. Now let's try creating a new database inside MongoDB Compass. Let's give it a name of people and create a collection in there named users. Now we have it here in MongoDB Compass. And if we go back to Atlas, head over to clusters. Cluster zero.
Okay, let's choose database on the left hand side. Then browse collections. We are now able to see the database and collection that we have created using Compass. We can also do the same thing right here in Atlas. If you want to create a database, just click this Create Database button, put a name for both database and collection. You can also choose additional preferences, but this is more advanced, so we can explore that later on. Okay, you can also drop a database here, just like in Compass. Let's try doing that. We just have to type that name of the database and click Drop. Now we have none as of the moment. Atlas also has this sample data set that you can load if you want a bigger database that you want to practice on. Or you can add your own data. That will be the same as creating a database using the Create Database button earlier. Okay, let's try loading the sample data set. This will take a while since it is a huge file. So I will stop recording for now. And you can also pause the video while yours is loading as well. Okay, now that it has been loaded, we can see that we have a lot of databases right now. A little pop-up will appear again. This will be our tasks for us to be familiarized on how to use Atlas. So we have finished loading the data sample. So that's done and checked. Next task is to navigate to Mflix collection. We can click this button. And mark it as completed. Next is to run a query. Let's try doing all of these just to get ourselves familiarized again. So the first one is find all movies with fantasy and drama genre. And again, I hope you guys already know how to do this as we have discussed it in the previous videos. But there's also a guide how to do that right in here. Now we can see that everything returned to us are all of the movies that are drama and fantasy genres. Okay, we can also look for all the movies with runtime greater than 120. Okay, so this one is 199. Okay, so that's greater than 120, this is 150, 143, and so on. Finally, a Metacritic score greater than 80. Alright, so again, this is greater than 80. 96, 7, 100. Right, so that is done. Next task is to explore indexes. You can read about the intro to indexes right here. A lot of things to explore. You can read them in your own time. All right, so we can also query with an index. Notice that I'm not copying and pasting. That's because I also want to get used to the syntax on how to write these things. But don't worry, you can always double check if you forget. Okay. And 
if we check these, all of the data returned to us have action, adventure, and them. And it doesn't matter if they are in the same capitalization because we set the case sensitivity to false. Last task is to connect via shell. Let's click this button and it will redirect us to that same model that we have seen earlier. And since we have already connected that, we don't have to connect it again. All we have to do is go back to Compass and refresh. Now, all of the data that we have in Atlas is also here. And if you remember, the previous database that we have created here in Compass people with users collection and we dropped it in Atlas, it is also already gone inside Compass. So it's working hand in hand. Going back to Atlas, we can now mark this as complete. There you go. We have successfully completed the checklist of tasks. There are also other tabs here that you can explore, but let's minimize this for now. So again, here in the database page is where we can see our cluster zero. We can choose to connect, view monitoring, and browse collections. And in database access is where you can see the database users. You can also add custom roles like if you already have a team to work with, just click this button right here. And you can also add new database user. Okay, so that is it, guys. Those are the fundamentals of MongoDB Atlas and the end of our MongoDB series. I hope you guys learned a lot. Hope you guys had fun. And if you have any suggestions, feel free to comment down below. Thank you and see you in other tutorials.